Hi Year 12, so Miss Brooks again with another Stories We Tell question. Stories We Tell presents multiple perspectives on Di and Polly, but ultimately the film is Sarah Polly's story. Discuss. So you have to decide if you agree with that statement, that it is Sarah Polly's story, and you're more than welcome to object to it, but um, I think that I'm going to spend a couple of paragraphs talking about that it is Di and Polly's it is about offering perspectives on Di and Polly because I really think that's she's central to Sarah's story of herself. But um, I think it's about more than that. I think it's about storytelling and other stuff, and I'm going to put that in as my last paragraph. So my first paragraph for this one would be that principally the film Stories We Tell is a tribute to the woman um, that was Diane Polly, who was a mother, a wife, a busy actress, and an inspiring, um, sorry, a busy, I would say, screen what's her name, casting agent, sorry, and an aspiring and enthusiastic actress. I think she was all of those things, and I think that's one important perspective we get on it. And this is going to be my kind of positive, um, what, what was a clear sense of the woman that we do get from the film, a clear perspective. My evidence for this would be the montage and the opening and that splicing together of the, um, the home movie footage and then the introduction to the interviews where people were telling the whole story from the beginning. Um, and you get a clear sense that she was fun, she was warm, she was um, a great person to be around, the most fun in life. Um, and I think you can comment on the way people look and the way they speak about her to really convey um, the, uh, the emotional relationship that exists between the storytellers and Diane, who has passed, but there is still that deep sense of affection for her clearly. And you can look at the recreations that um, reiterate or um, substantiate these ideas about who she is proving um, who she is. And I think you would talk about these and say that they um, bring to life the image that the storytellers are talking about. They bring to life the woman that the storytellers um, are reflecting upon. Um, you know, and Lu um, Joanna says, you know, who gives a shit about our family basically and you've got people looking uncomfortable and nervous because it is a, a giant task it seems to try and capture this woman who clearly meant so much but who all of them feel bewildered in the face of trying to um, tell the story of it's it's a it's a mammoth task for them and and something that they feel perplexed by but also wonder who has an interest in um, but obviously what's the driving factor is that there are so many perspectives because of this one thing which is refracted in so many ways, which I would end my paragraph with to lead into this paragraph, which is going to be about the idea of secrets and, and the disruption of the narrative. So this all appears in quite a linear fashion and you learn about her life and um, her relationship with Michael, um, her work in Montreal, the conception of Sarah, her birth. Um, Sarah growing up a bit, um, Diane's death and funeral. So that kind of presents itself in a linear fashion for the first 45 minutes of the film, if you like. But then we get this understanding that, which is hinted at early on, that she was dissatisfied with her marriage as it stood. She was a woman that yearned for more demonstrative attention, um, affection, sorry, and that clearly she wanted more than what she had. She wasn't happy with um, how things were romantically, it seems. Um, and this possibly is a consequence of all the expectations that she faced as a female at that time um, and so um, sought an outlet in a rela relationship outside her marriage. Um, and the first of that we see is with Harry and the revelation that he is, um, you know, someone she's kind of fascinated or who's fascinated by her and I think she loved that attention probably from him. He was infatuated as... Um, What's her name? I think it's Deidre explains. She talks about how in love he was with her. I think it's Deidre. It's the little one that's reflecting on the conversation and she says, you know, it wasn't um, on conversation. It was kind of thin because she talks about um, how much he just obsessed over Diane and that was all the conversation that they would have. Anyway, and it turns out that she was a woman of secrets and I think this starts to kind of, or this challenges the initial perspective that we were given of Diane. Um, and you might talk about skinny love as a way to communicate her dissatisfaction, the alias Grace quote, as in when the secrets are unveiled, it throws in, in 
the story or what we knew of it into a confusion and then it becomes like how do you put it back together after that. Um, Michael said she was a woman who wanted more and we see then that she wanted more but there obviously are consequences for that and we look at the consequences for that and I think the perspective that we're offered is one where Diane is somewhat of a promiscuous woman if you like or unhappy with um, her marriage and kind of seeking solace outside of that but that she paid a very stiff price for that and I think that Sarah Polly as director wants us to feel empathy for the way in which um, Diane was judged for her actions and the consequences she faced. So she was divorced from her first husband, George Buchanan. Socially in the newspaper, her name was kind of turned to mud and you can look at some of those extracts. That's an intertextual reference there. And you can talk about the personal loss, the fact that she could only see her children once a month. It caused them both great sadness. The stepmother turns out to be abusive. And this is all revealed through interviews and you've got a small snatch of recreations which kind of show the car pulling up behind the curtain and this idea of that her separate life, that she wasn't really a part of her children's life and the struggle that that would have caused. Um, so this then the revelation of this secret creates a bit of a conundrum for Sarah where she's trying to pursue the truth because it, it becomes obvious that her mother was a woman of secrets and there are, are, are truths to be uncovered. Um, and so the film then morphs into a journey that's more about um, her parentage and um, and also like the way in which people have made sense of this one thing and the way in which people now are reflecting upon that and, and making judgments about not only Diane but themselves based on what they've they've learned. You know, Anne Tate says, it makes it sound like she was terribly promiscuous, but I don't think she was, you know. And Michael says, you know, if you have sympathy, have it for Harry. Like, And he says, above all, we shouldn't judge Diane. So I think in the process of telling these stories, it becomes quite a reflective act and these people make judgments and make decisions about the way they convey their their truth and their knowledge um, that offers many perspectives on them but also a new perspective on Diane. So finally, the film, though, is about Sarah's journey of discovery and the way in which she and others have been changed by this experience, which is the revelation of the secret. So sh you can see that in um, the way that Johnny breaks the fourth wall and he says, well, what's it about? Because it's about more than just Diane. It's about more than um, her being loved and whatnot and her being a woman of secrets and the disruption that her affair has caused for their lives but also the disruption that it's caused on Sarah's journey um and so we see that it's about more than that and you can that's further reiterated when you've got her kind of contemplatively watching Michael deliver his narrative and that's when she's sitting at the sound booth she's got her head resting on her um hand and she's just kind of watching him and he is talking about her life and she's just sitting there listening and you can see just sometimes glimpses of the emotion that she might be feeling at that moment and it hints at the impact of this experience. For example, when Michael's talking about the story evolving of um, it being a joke and then um, it became it came to a point where it was no longer funny that the, kid, the other children were saying that Sarah's father was not Michael. And so it became then a search for a father, not about her mother but um, a search for a father and a question of where she belonged. That's what it became. So such it is Sarah's story. And then um, Sarah asserts through her film a democratic theory of storytelling and that is that everybody gets equal weight. And this is an idea that's um, criticised but it is her story to tell and to tell it she believes that she needs to rely on many voices. Um, and it's about wading in down the ladder trying to get a sense of the wreckage that her life is with this revelation so everything's been thrown into a chaos and now it's lying down kind of at the bottom of the ocean if you like and she's got to try and figure out can she put it back together does it make sense and in her journey to do that she's learning more and more about herself and um, becomes then not necessarily about the single truth but about what she learns about herself on the way um, and this, I think, is kind of mimicked or um, echoed in the scene where she's directing Michael as a teenager 
and he's got to step down into the pool and she's like, get down further. Um, and he can't seem to touch bottom and can't do what she wants. Um, but it's that kind of journey of trying to um, get down there to the wreckage that is really reflected. And it links to the poem by Adrian Rich that's referenced in the film. It's called um, Something Down to the Wreckage. I'll put a reference here for you. Anyway, that's a side note. If you don't want to include that, don't. Just stick to here and, and bring it back to the idea of equal weight. And that's Sarah's story to tell and, and, and in the way she wants to do it. And you could end there and ignore that. That's just a bit of extension if you thought... All right, that's the end of this screencast. I'll move on to the next one.